Uh, Christopher listens in Kirkland, Washington, and we get a brand new listener. Baron is in Scroggins, Texas. Mary Santora is back. Hi, guys. Here you have fun. Were you there off you playing go. the Powerball? <laughs> yes, that's what I did. Oh, good. I had to. I was standing in line with all the olds, picking ah. our numbers one by one. When is no, that? Drawing? Nobody won. Tonight. Well, they did it. Uh, I thought it was last night. They do it tonight? Yeah, Monday, okay. Wednesday, Saturday. Um, the billion-dollar uh, Powerball jackpot. But okay. there are two new millionaires in Ohio. They did a drawing on Monday night. And nobody won the Powerball. And I think it's up to 1.2 one point something billion. Yeah. Uh, but there's a new millionaire in Norwalk. And there's a new millionaire way down in Newport, Ohio. You know where Newport is? It's a couple hours like due south of Canton. It's right across the, the river from West Virginia. Hmm. Little town of Newport, Ohio. There's a new millionaire. It's one thing if you become a millionaire. In a heavily populated area, you can kind of fade into whatever. Your family and friends might know. It's quite another if you become a millionaire in Newport, Ohio, or Norwalk, for that matter, out in Huron County. Pretty much anywhere in Ohio. I mean, it's a good place to I've performed in Norwalk. There was a winery. These people, like, owned a winery. Were they millionaires? Maybe. They let us (sighs) stay at their house, and they had, like, a hot tub and stuff. They let you, you performed, and they let you stay at their house. It was like a- You're performing at the winery. We were performing at the winery. And the accommodations, instead of getting us a hotel, they had, like, a big old farmhouse. Oh. And the comic who booked it, it was, like, his childhood family friends. So, oh, yeah, they're cool people. They got this giant house. We can just crash in the basement. And so we just got wine drunk all night and then went back to these rich people's house <laughs> and hung out in the hot tub and had a fire and slept in the basement. That wouldn't be too bad, actually. It wasn't. Now that you mention it, sounds pretty nice. Yeah, one point two billion on the power. So I guess the new, uh, the next Powerball uh, drawing will be tonight. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Three people uh, won two million dollars. Uh, two of them in Ohio, I believe. So uh, there you go for people who play this stuff. My wife's always like, "We should play the Powerball." I'm like, "Should we? Like, Why not? It's fine. Yeah, I just it never occurs to me. It's not on my radar. Was it a bucket ticket? Uh two. Two dollars a play. A buck for two tickets? Uh, no. Two dollars for one play. Wait, two, it's two dollars for two tickets? Two two tickets for a buck. Two tickets for a buck. So and if it, I, I mean a deer, a male deer. Two tickets for one dollar. So if I spend two dollars, how many tickets do I get? You get one ticket, one drawing. One ticket. For two dollars. For two dollars. So I give them two dollars, they give me one ticket. Correct. How many tickets if I give them more than a dollar? You don't get them for a dollar. It's two dollars is the least. Two dollars. The okay. least amount you can spend so is two dollars. If I get one ticket for two dollars mm-hmm. and I give them three dollars, they'll give me a dollar one back. Ticket and a dollar back. They'll give me my dollar back. Correct. But I'll get it two th- three or tickets. You can do a power play for three dollars. Okay. Now I'm confused. That's how you win the one point two billion. You power, the play? power play? Yeah. Well then so you can't win just by buying a ticket? One three dollar ticket, yes. There's a $2 ticket and a $3 ticket. Oh, well, now you're throwing this monkey wrench in because I said how much are tickets. Ticket. You said $2. <laughs> what's the $3 ticket? Is the power play. Well, what's the $2 ticket? Regular. Why wouldn't I do Reg- the- Why wouldn't everybody play the two $3 ticket? Because some people don't want to spend $3. They don't want to spend an extra dollar on something they're going to lose? Some people, yeah. Huh. What's the benefit of the power play? That's I'll never how you get, win the big jackpot. I'll never oh, understand then, gamblers' mentality. Then it costs $3. But you can, no, you can buy it for 2 and still become a millionaire or win, you know, $10 right, but we're million. Talking about- you just won't win the power. You won't win the one point two billion. Okay. You could you win a prize. Win, you gotcha. can still win like so ten million. Okay. To win the Powerball, you have to do, do the, the power, power play. play. Got yes. it. We bought last time we bought I love tickets. How this stuff is in your DNA. Yeah. And we still have no you've you explained this to us so much. <laughs> you guys and can't I just, comprehend gambling um, in it. Well, anything sense. you do a lot of, you'll get pretty good at it, you know, or or, or at least more knowledgeable. You'll, you about understand it. it more. Yeah. We bought a Powerball ticket when we were on the Jersey Shore. Because that my was the last time it was up over a billion. Yeah, la- this past summer we bought a ticket while we were in Jersey. So because we're drunk and walking past a liquor store, like, let's go and buy some Powerball tickets. We did that show at the van. Nationals, and I bought a power. I, I bought lottery tickets on the way down, but I guess I only oh, wait, paid wait, two dollars. Go ahead, sorry. Go so ahead. I think I only bought. I don't think I could have won the Powerball because I have it wrong. Ah, you power idiot. plays are just multipliers. <laughs> so the extra dollar multiplies a non jackpot. Winning. So a two dollar gotcha. ticket will put you yes, in the running. But for you have the to match all five numbers and the Powerball. Yeah. yeah. 
the power that play part is for non-jackpot winnings. Got it. I had it confused in my head. Is I that apologize. what you were calling to tell me, Bill? No, it's almost right. Well, first of all, I hate the show. Thank but, you. Um, <laughs> but that's 95% right. So everyone in the world can buy a $2 Powerball. You get all the numbers, you win the $1.2 billion. Okay. Yeah. The power play, you don't get 1.2 billion times whatever uh, number is drawn for that, which can be 1x to 10x. Right. Okay. So you're not going to get $200 billion. Well, yeah, they only have so much money. I understand that there's a. (laughs) Right. 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 So uh, if you get five out of six numbers, you're still going to win X amount, say a million. But if you're a gambler, like you said, you got to play that extra power play for a dollar. Because if you win a million and they draw like the number 10 ball, guess how much you win? How much? $10 million. Well, I'm looking at the so, website right now and it says it's like maxed out. So if you match five for a million dollars, no matter if the power play is times two or times 10, you can still only win $2 million. I I'm on the website right now. Per, yeah, I know. Ninety nine percent of the time that's not true, but um very quickly, like on a pick three number, if everyone plays Saint Patrick's Day, uh November uh March third, uh seventeen, right? So it's three one seven. In the past they have suspended sales because everyone and their brother plays that number. If it comes out straight, they don't have the money to cover it. I Even see. though over the course of the year they make six hundred and fifty million, so the old proverb applies. Al, uh, ready? Yes. Can't play. Can't you play know I can't right? resist an old proverb. It, okay. No one wins at gambling. That's not what it's made for, no. except the casino or who's running it. You'll never. So win. yes, never, ever, ever. The house win. sometimes so, win. I that's what he's saying. Yeah. No, no, that's what I meant. Who's ever running it, both legal and illegal, they're the ones driving the Cadillac. You're the one driving the 1972 Nova. Well, yeah, but somebody <laughs> – so, hey, don't make fun of my Nova, Bill. Yeah, Alan, um, I'm sorry. Somebody sorry. is going to win. Thank you, Bill. There's Bill in Lakewood. But somebody wins. Eventually. Yes. But the house always wins. Well, sure. So what we should do, Alan, become the house. Right, but no, can take dumb, dumb money but here. like in real life, you don't always win. So, you know, I mean, we're just walking around and – Trying to figure out life. Yeah. You know, if you get a little bit of cabbage every so often, that's what people have been reduced to. Yeah. Maybe a little bit will drip down onto me. My dad I'll always be... used to say that because I would always want to max bet wherever, if we're playing a slot machine or whatever, I want to spend the most I can on that specific machine. And he would always say, like, Mayor, you have to win first. Okay. Yeah. You're not going to win. So what you're doing by betting max, you're just losing your money faster. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. How about we sit here for a dollar instead of $10? Instead of burning just, it all at once. Right. Burn it dollar by dollar. Well, that's the way people think. Where Are you really going to let $1 be the difference between, say, you match four numbers, but you didn't do the power play, you win 100 bucks? You do the power play with a times 10, you win 1,000. So because you were too cheap to spend $1, now you only want 100 instead yeah, of 1,000. If that happens. If you win. But you win. could also you gotta lose. Win, a, right. Yeah, of course. You got to win, win first. first. All right. Yeah, Alan right. Cox Show, After Hours line. Uh, people who want to leave us messages there, you can uh, do it anytime. It's 216-986-8903. Hi, guys. It's Liz. Your colostomy bag discussion reminded me of um, incident. I was dating a guy many years ago who, uh, his sister lived in Philadelphia. We went to visit. They had a tiny apartment. She and her boyfriend who had a colostomy bag that leaked. So the entire time we were in their tiny apartment, smelling poop. And then we went to uh, sightsee and we were, it was the heat of the summer and we were in a closed up car with the air conditioning on and smelled poop. And I couldn't crack the window because that would have been like saying something about the poop smell. And the place they wanted to take us was a submarine, an old submarine. <laughs> oh, no. Submarine. So I never got away from the poop smell the entire Philadelphia vacation. Thanks for uh, reminding me. Listen, I know that you want to have friends out to see you, even if your live-in boyfriend has a colostomy bag that leaks. 
But I would think that you might, uh, there might be certain accommodations there. You know, you have to, you have to be aware that this person coming in is not going to be used to that environment. Maybe don't take them into a submarine. Submarines are way overrated anyway. You know, you go to these historical tours or whatever, Pearl Harbor and, you know, and like, oh, you can walk. Don't, didn't they have a submarine here on Lake Erie or something? Isn't there a big ship you can walk down into? I think that's over that's always there. The flats. I thought it was. Like it was by back like behind the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame yeah, or something. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's a I static. It was Twenty thousand leagues under the sea at Disney. I don't. I don't <laughs> know if. I, no, first couple of years here in Cleveland, we took the kids into whatever boat is over there, and you can walk down, and everybody marvels at how tight the quarters are. Oh my God! Imagine this. You know, it's fun, but it's kind of overrated. But colostomy. We, we had there was a colostomy bag conversation yesterday because of Matthew Perry, um, who upset the colostomy community because he said that it was a a terrible situation. And those people were trying to point out that that gave them great lives and Matthew Perry should uh, be more blah, 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 whatever it is, right? You didn't think you were ever going to piss off the colostomy bag community, but there it is. Matthew, I forget Matthew Perry's Canadian, by the way, like he's born here. But he grew up in Canada. Did, did you see him that. on Colbert? No. He was talking about... Uh, you grew up in Canada, in uh, Ottawa, went to school with a young man named named Justin Trudeau. Yes. Now, who gets recognized more in Canada? <laughs> you or Trudeau? I would say Trudeau. But, you know, there was a big rumor about us... What? ...that we had... ...that I beat him up in, in grade school. Did you? I don't think so. No. <laughs> But you're not entirely no, sure. No, my, my friends, Brian Murray and Chris Murray, who were the guys and myself who invented that weird way of talking, you know, could it be colder in here? Sure, you know, sure, like, sure. They told me that we beat up Justin Trudeau, and I just believed them. And somehow it, he got the story, and he tweeted me, and he wanted to, like, have a fight. <laughs> and I said, I said, you have your own army. No, thanks. <laughs> You know who Matthew Perry's stepfather is, by the way? Because his dad and his mom divorced when he was a baby. He wasn't even one year old yet. His dad was an actor named um, John Perry. And his Matthew Perry's mom married a guy named Keith Morrison. Oh. You know who that is? The dude on Dateline that they make fun of on SNL, Bill Hader used to do him. The guy with the gray hair. And yeah. Like, and then... <laughs> there, was, this. Honestly, there was a guy that was doing a tour at the building today, or yesterday, that kind of looked like Keith Morris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's Matthew Perry's stepdad is Keith Morrison. Keith Morrison kind of looks like an older John Tesh that <laughs> got electrocuted. Yeah. But Matthew Perry's dad was a guy named John Bennett Perry, and I sometimes it'll pop up in the best of. Many years ago when my wife was still working for the Cleveland Film Commission, we were going to events uh, pretty frequently having to do with the film and television projects that were being shot here in Cleveland. And we had it was a rap party or something, and it was a bar in East 4th. It might have been Wonder Bar or something. And it was a Friday night, and it was a bunch of us hanging around. And there was a guy at the bar, and I was only a couple of drinks in. And I was convinced that this guy was John Perry. And it wasn't John Perry. I feel like was, I remember this. You were he was like, Do you want me to be John Perry? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was another, it was a, it was an actor that a lot of people might recognize if you saw him. It was an actor who turned out to be a guy named Madison Mason, who I think had been in town to do a stage production or he's at Playhouse. I don't know what he was here for. But I'm standing at the bar waiting to get a drink, and I go, Are you John Perry? And he's assuring me he's not John. John Perry was a guy with both of these guys, by the way, with a billion credits on their resume and very recognizable people. And he assured me. And for whatever reason, I was sure he was lying to me. And I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why. why. Would he lie? I don't. He wouldn't. I don't know. Well, because Alan has told the story about how he lied to the guy that asked if he was Alan Cox. So maybe he thought he was, this guy was doing the same thing to him. Maybe. But, uh, yeah, he turned out to be a guy named Madison Mason, who was also a well-known uh, actor. But uh, John Bennett Perry is Matthew Perry's birth father. Uh, Joe in Philly. What's going on, Joe? Yo, what up, guys? What up? I'm offended by that lady caller. Like, who, you Liz? Have to mention fi- yeah, you didn't have to mention five times that you're going to Philadelphia. 
only to smell some guy's poop bag. <laughs> like, yeah, Philly smells enough on its own. You don't need his help. I know. I get where you're coming from. Yeah, like, why is he? Why enough. is he going to take all the credit? Look, if you if you wanted a better smell, go into the subway. There's urine. There's plenty of uh, ammonia. Uh, you might you might even get lucky and get some more homeless poop in there. But don't just say you went to Philadelphia and you visited a submarine. To smell poop in the submarine. I mean, you that's... Didn't. You just got stuck with that. Well, yeah. yeah. She was trying, to, I think, to paint a picture there. But, uh, you know, you know as well as I do, Joe, septa is very close to septic. And... True. If you've ever taken public transportation in Philadelphia, it is... Uh, Joe's right. It's like any public transportation, right? You're going to get a wide array of um, amazing things to smell. It's going to be an old factory smorgasbord down there. In the subway. And it's rough to think that you're living with a person for so long that you become ignorant to the smell of their colostomy bag. You become nose blind to their uh, their droppings. Well, even if you are <laughs> not <laughs> smelling it, you're still, you still are aware that it's dripping. Like it's yeah. leaking. Yeah. And that's a problem, too. Just ignoring that. Yeah, that is weird. Like, that would have to be the first conversation I would have with my sister. Like, pull her aside and be like, hey, you, this poop guy, what's, what's, what's the deal? What's going on? Does he them? leak? Like, Does he drip? Well, is dripping okay? down over there is uh, ruining my vacation. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, listen, I will, pa- I will pass along your displeasure, Joe, okay? Go Phils. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but them Phillies shut out the Astros last night. Yeah, that was a Holy big game. Holy cow, seven to nothing. For a while, it looked like the Astros are going to run away with it. Philly, seven. Houston, nothing last night. The colors to Harper. It's drilled. Right center field. Lightning strikes. Two nothing, Phil. Out of Gomes starts the second and rips one to left field. Over Alvarez and gone. The Phillies lead the series uh, two games to one. Game four is tonight. For anybody who's paying attention to the World Series, we have Bureau Chiefs in Philadelphia and Houston. But uh, to get shut out in a World Series game, oof. I feel like we got oof. A, I feel like we got a root for the Phillies because we're closer. Not even closer. I would just be nice to see San in, or, or, uh, the Astros not win. Yeah. With their history and, you know, Phillies haven't won in a long time. They have a World Series, in, right, the Phillies? Yeah, they won in... What? 80s, 70s, something like no, that? No, no, they won in the 2000s. Oh, they did, okay. Um, and the celebrations in Philadelphia are way better yes. than pretty much anywhere else well, in the country. Well, 2000s is still fairly recent. Though. Yes. When's the last time... I was going to say... When's Astros the last time- won, like, three years ago or something. Astros have won a couple of times yeah. in the last decade. It, this is, like, their fourth World Series when's in six years. When's the last time years. the Guardians won? Nah. 1948 or something like that? <laughs> like when, the, 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 when baseball was still like in... They were the Spiders, I think. When I, don't, they were, I don't think the Indians or Guardians yes. have ever won. Well, the, the last time the Indians won a World Series, people were offended that black people wanted to play baseball with white people. How and they dare they? they still couldn't yet. How dare they? Yeah. So it's been a long time. Long story short, it's been a long time. Since, uh, yeah. So, um, Alan, I think that Bruce Springsteen song, Streets of Philadelphia, is about that very topic. Yes, he sings about he sings about poop and pee. Um, yeah. Listen, I don't... Uh, nope, 48. It was 48. 1948. 1948. They, yeah. They beat the Boston Braves. Hmm. Four to two. People are telling me it's the USS Cod that is downtown. Or maybe that's cash on delivery. Is it the USS cash on delivery? Is there any chance that's what it is? And that really went away, didn't it? Yeah, cash on delivery. I don't even know what that is. It's so old timey. A lot of people don't know what it is. Why would you name what is a it? boat after you would you order pay away for delivered. something and you would pay when you got it? Oh, they just brought it to you? Yep. You know what? They're a more, more trusting world back then. I thought about mm-hmm. this, too, working in a restaurant industry, where I feel like ordering takeout is, like, the most trusting thing. Because what's stopping you? If you wanted to just wreak havoc and chaos, you can pay with a card. Very few places require you to pay when you order takeout food. Like, you're like, oh, I'm going to come pick it up. They're like, okay, you probably will. 
Like, not that there's any point to that other than, like, maybe you just like to see the world burn. You mean ordering food and not, not coming to get it? it? Yes. So, so they, they waste the food. have a bunch of food. The... I don't know why you would do that. I but mean, because maybe you, you work in the restaurant that. and you don't want to pay for your dinner, so you have someone call and order. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, oh, look, it was the exact well, meal that I wanted. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, we're just going to throw it away anyway. <laughs> but I'm like, if ordering pickup food, like takeout food, is very trusting. Yeah. That's why a lot of companies just do it through apps now because they're like, I don't want to have to deal with it. Order it through Uber Eats. Yeah, that's if you call an order. Yeah. I think a lot of people are still. Well, the only thing I, I guess a lot. Of, I guess that's dumb. I guess a lot of people call an order. Like yeah. I, anytime yeah. I'm picking up food, like I'll call on my way home from work and then drive to go pick it up. I've that, that, never been asked for anything. Uh, I was going to say, yeah. Like if you're on the road, you will. But like if I'm ordering something at home, I'll order it online and go pick it up. Yeah. It's all paid for. I don't want to sit there and pay for it when I'm, I just want to walk in, grab, grab it, and leave. Get yeah. Out. Yeah. yeah. I will. I'm kind of half and half because especially if it's something that if they if they have their website set up for me to order directly from them, yeah, then I'll pay for it and go in and grab it. But when you have, but even a lot of websites like, have a cash option where they're like yeah, you can pay cash when you pick but it like up. Like I'm of Allen's school, but if it's like someplace where I go to get pizza or whatever, I'll just call and be like, hey, I'll be here at this time. Yeah, you know, and just pay when I get there. Alan, I work for FedEx. We get COD still all the time. Really. It is still a thing. You just don't hear it as often. Like, it used to be an advertisement. Yeah. Go to this. See, cash or COD or whatever mm-hmm. they would say. Like, late night commercials. Alan, look up the story of the Phillies winning in relation to the economy. Every time the Phillies win the World Series, there's an economic collapse. Yeah, they won in 2008. There it Against was. the Rays. Yeah. Holy cow. All right. <laughs> well, go Houston? Then. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, take a break. I will have uh, Wasp tickets for you. It's Blackie Lawless and the gang are going to do the Agora for the 40th anniversary tour for those guys. So if you're a Wasp fan, Stansbury just did uh, Big Hair Wednesday. I don't know if you play Wasp or not. Uh, I'll get you those uh, tickets. And then $1,000, another keyword for you, around 3.30 for you to go fund yourself. It's the Ellen Park Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever. 